Hey everyone, this week we're going to find out if Bruce Willis could have really saved Earth from imminent destruction. There's so much wrong with this. I wonder if we'll have time. Welcome back to Fact or Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech from your favorite movies, TV shows, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Last week, we delved into the logistics of the Ducati motorcycle used in Tron Legacy, discovering that the beautiful bike in the film was actually 100% stock from the manufacturer. <laughs> Before we get started, let's see what you guys on the internets wanted to see this week. At Andy Frenchy says, At Veronica, oh my god, how about the old favorite, Armageddon? Should we train astronauts to drill or drillers to be astronauts? Hmm, good question, Andy. Armageddon, famous for its Michael Bayness, so much that Ebert has it on its worst movies ever list, saying the movie is an assault on the eyes, the ears, the brain, common sense, and the human desire to be entertained. Today, I will interrogate real-life scientist Joe Hansen and see what he thinks about Bruce Willis detonating a warhead on a Texas-sized meteorite. For those of you that haven't seen the classic Oh My God, We're All Gonna Die Armageddon film from 1998, it's basically just that, a movie entirely based around the fact that there is a ginormous meteorite headed towards our lovely, innocent planet, and we have 18 days to stop it. We're not here to pass judgment on the craft of movie making, uh, but merely to take a look at whether we now have the technology to save Earth from an asteroid impact. But seriously, I'm interested to know, is this an actual reality? Are there giant meteorites on an impact trajectory for this planet? Are we tracking them now? What technology exists that we might be able to use to save the planet? Is any of the tech in the movie realistic? Luckily, we have Joe Hansen Skyping in from Texas here to tell us what is fact or fictional about this whole implanting a giant bomb on a space rock thing. Hey, Joe. How's it going, Veronica? Very well, thank you. So you run a popular blog called It's Okay to Be Smart, plus you're a real-life scientist currently finishing your PhD. Is there is there anything else I'm missing to make me feel dumb? No, that's it. Those are pretty much the two sole focuses of my life at the moment. Nice. So first, I want to talk about how ridiculous it would be to put Bruce Willis in charge of saving the world and then have him correspond with Billy Bob Thornton as the head of NASA. I wouldn't trust them taking care of my cats, let alone the whole world. That's a great point. You know, it didn't scare me as much to have Bruce Willis in charge of destroying things, because we all know that he's really good at doing that. Indeed. But Billy Bob Thornton in charge of NASA, I mean, this is the same NASA that didn't see a Texas-sized asteroid coming at Earth until it was about 18 days away. So yeah, I'm not sure that's the guy we want to uh, trusted with the, the, the future of the human race there. In the movie, do you think that they went about it the right way? In terms of uh, trying to destroy that thing, mm -hmm. uh, no. Anything that's that big, let's just stop calling this thing an asteroid right off the bat. This is the size of Texas. You know, we look around the, the solar system and beyond, 1,800 kilometers wide. That's, you know, Pluto's only 1.3 times that big. So we're really talking kind of like dwarf planet sizes. Wouldn't it be smarter to just push it out of the way somehow rather than, you know, completely destroying it and thus causing even more projectiles hurtling towards Earth? Yeah, so let's take a look at what they tried to do in the movie. They said we're going to take a nuclear weapon, we're going to put it 800 feet below the surface of this asteroid, and then we're going to blow it in half so that it misses Earth. Well, let's start with the nuclear weapon. The most powerful nuclear weapon that's ever been constructed uh, by the human race was the Tsar bomb in Russia, about 50 to 100 megatons. Now, if you threw that at an asteroid this size, it would laugh in your face, it would bounce right off. So let's look at some of the other methods they could have used. Now, one of my favorites is called a gravitational tug or a, a gravity tractor. You take a spacecraft, you fly it up to an asteroid or a meteorite, and you put it in orbit. Because both of these things have mass, they're going to pull on each other. So if I take the spacecraft and I turn on a little engine and start pulling it this way, over time, I can pull that meteorite or at the meteor asteroid right out of the way. And if we maybe blasted the entire uh, uh, planet Earth's nuclear arsenal at an asteroid that was hundreds of, of, of meters to a kilometer wide, we might be able to blow a chunk off the side of that asteroid, and that would create heat and some debris, and that could be some force that could knock it off of its course. But how did NASA in the film not see this thing coming earlier? Let's take an object the size of Texas like we had in the movie. 
that would give off so much light that it would almost be uh, visible by the naked eye. So now that we've spotted something well in advance, what are the logistics of even landing on a zero gravity object traveling at those kinds of speeds? It's all about packing enough fuel behind that spacecraft to get at that distance. We're gonna have to develop a rocket that's a skyscraper of fuel with a tiny Volkswagen Beetle-sized spacecraft on the top, just like it would do with the Apollo days. So we've got to come up with a way to get people into space first, or a remote spacecraft. Now, what do you think the military is actually prepared for in real life? Well, there's a lot of projects, private and public. Um, now, nuclear weapons, I don't think we're really developing too many, uh, too many more nuclear weapons. We're trying to sort of reduce the number that are on the planet. We do like giant lasers. I think the military might be kind of going in that direction a little bit. I really like the idea of a giant magnifying glass like you would get ants with as a kid. We've got to pretend big time here that we did crack that asteroid in half. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things you've got to think about. Now, an asteroid that size, I'll use my toy asteroids that I got out of my yard here. An asteroid that size, let's say we got the bomb in the middle. How much force would you have to expel those two parts? Uh, what kind of acceleration do you have to put in there in order to miss the Earth by 400 miles, like they said? Well, it turns out some students in the UK figured this out. So if we took that largest bomb that's ever been created, the SAR bomb in Russia, 50 to 100 megatons, we'd take 50 billion of those bombs to drive these two pieces far enough apart to miss Earth. All right, so this one is going to get a major fictional. What I gathered from Joe was that the orange spacesuit color was just about the only piece of factual information in the entire movie. Oh, and Ben Affleck is a total stud. I want to know what you guys think. What would you do if Bruce Willis was in charge of Earth's safety? You know where to find me. Tweet me at Veronica, send video questions, or post on Facebook. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Fact or Fictional on TechFeed. Hey, Stu! Yeah? Um, uh, what, what are you jumping over this week? Uh, I don't know. What do you want me to jump over? Um, uh, Bruce Willis. Oh, Br Bruce Willis? Okay. Oh, and just so you guys know, I think all my basement renovations will be done in time for the show next week, so no worries about that. I think we're having pretty good, pretty good progress. Huh? Yeah, you've been here the whole time. That's, that's kind of weird. See you guys later. With proper training and a little bit of guts, I think I could probably be like Garrett Hedlund in, uh, in Tron, uh, except without all the falling and, uh, and uh, jumping off of things and, 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 and chase scenes and, and maybe just a nice Sunday ride through the hills.